Hey guys, today I'm gonna make a quick video explaining a motherboard of a laptop and how you can check if you can upgrade your processor, your RAM, etc. So, um, if this is a mobile processor and this is an older one, a 2630QM and this is how the socket of a laptop looks if it's upgradable. The way you can know by the outside of your laptop if your processor is upgradable by looking at the letters behind the processor. Like I said, 2630QM. The Q stands for quad, for quad core, and the M stands for mobile. And mobile is actually the, the, the M is the choice that means that your processor is socketed. Socketed means it can be taken out. If you have like a U or any new processor actually, I think, they won't be upgradable, but like I think the first three or four generations of mobile processors were upgradable. So if you have an M in your processor, then there is the, then it's socketed. But that doesn't exa that doesn't already mean that you can upgrade it because your motherboard also has something that's called a chipset, and this is my chipset. It's a HM65, and uh, chipset supports your CPU, and you can easily Google that and it gives a list of what CPUs are supported. But even that does not confirm that it will work. That's a good way to check if it will work, but there is the chance that the BIOS will say no, no to your new processor. So check your, uh, this is an Asus motherboard as you can see. So I would head over to the Asus site and check for this uh, motherboard, so for my laptop side what BIOS update they are available and check if there was a BIOS update that supported a certain processor type. And what you also can do is look up if you're, there's another model of your same laptop with another processor. Like this is an Asus, this is an Asus N73 S, SV, but there's also the SJ and the SM I think. And those all have some sort of differences. Like there's one with a 2670. So this one runs now at 2760 and I, I couldn't figure out if the BIOS supports it or not and I think it doesn't but the processor works now so that's good. So Also you have to make sure that the power draw of your processor is the same as the one that was installed stock. So this one is 45 watts and the previous one was also 45 watts. I think it caps out at 55 watts with turbo boost but that's not important as long as the watts are the same like there's an extreme processor series of the sandy bridge and those pull 55 watts i probably couldn't run those well no i don't think they would work so you have to make sure that the tpd value is always also the same as your previous one so that's another thing you have to look out for when upgrading your processor yeah so i'm quickly going to show how you take out the processor so as you can see there's a groove in here and this is very easy all you do is stick something in there that fits and I'm gonna try to get my camera to a position that you could, that I won't block it and you just twist it and that unlocks the processor and now you can take out the processor and you gotta handle it with care and there's this sign here that's also on the other side and that's also on here and then you know where to align it. You just lay it on there, don't push. Wait till it falls down. Now it has fallen down and you do the same thing. You put that in here and you lock it. Now this process is tight. So that's all you do. That's all you have to do if you have an M processor, which is socketed. If it's soldered like this, you can't, you can't switch it, but you have to have tremendous amounts of skills. But uh, I can't do that and I don't need to. Uh, these are RAM slots. Some people claim that my laptop shows in GPU Z that it has four, which it does show, yes. But as you can see, I have two banks here and one bank on this side. There's no four banks. This one is the graphics card, so this is the 540M. This is socketed. As you can see, this is soldered to the motherboard. This is not replaceable and that's the difference. So um, this here is a SATA connector, which is for the drive bay, which I have my dr drive to HDD bay inside. And this is the mini PCI port. This is actually where I connect my external graphics card to. So it shows uh, VLAN, which is for Wi-Fi, and that's what's usually in there. But actually my external graphics card is using that port. So. The cable that comes out here comes from the mini PCI and goes into my 970. So that's how that works. And for the RAM banks, I'm quickly going to show that too. There are metal pins here and you pull them to the side and the RAM will pop out. And you can do the same with this one and you push them down to install. So you put it in like this and you install it.
that's all. So this is a very easy video, just quickly showing. If you have uh, not seen my other video where I fully upgrade my computer, this is just an add-on to that video on how to switch your processor out because many people said I should have shown that. I should have, but yeah, you can always put more in a video, but it makes longer, but I should have included that. So now it is here. I hope you see this. Thanks for watching. Bye.